Welcome to Developing Graphics Frameworks with Python and OpenGL, Part 21, Local Transformations. At this point, you can create matrices corresponding to translation and rotation and scaling transformations. So, if you wanted to use these transformations, here's what you would do. Let's say you have some object, such as this turtle, which is defined by a collection of points. If you want to translate this object, let's say in two-dimensional space, you would write down the translation matrix, and then you would multiply each of these points by the translation matrix, and that would produce this new image here. And you could continue to transform this object. For example, if you had a rotation matrix, say rotation around the origin by 45 degrees, you could multiply the points by that rotation matrix. You'd have this picture here. And then you could multiply by the translation matrix again. And you'd end up with this position and orientation here. Now, it's been kind of implicit, but we want to make it very clear and precise that all of these transformations are relative to some type of global coordinate system. There's always been some xy axes in the background, and that aspect of these transformations, we emphasize it by calling them global transformations. Each of these objects is being moved with respect to these axes. Translation always means translation in the direction of the x axis, whether you're in this location here or in this location here. Now you might wonder well, what other kinds of transformations could there be? So here in this video we'd really like to talk about local transformations. But first we need to talk about local coordinate systems. So the internal or local coordinate system which we use to define any of these objects is kind of arbitrary. The origin and the orientation and scale of these local coordinate axes are chosen for convenience and have nothing to do with a global coordinate system. For example, the origin of each individual object is defined to be, in some meaningful sense, the center of that object, without any reference to the global coordinate system. When you specify the location of each of these points with reference to its internal coordinate system, that's called local coordinates. And once you've defined something in terms of local coordinates, if you need to move it or resize it to a specific position or rotation or location in the scene, you can multiply it by transformation matrices, by global transformations. As you transform an object, you're also transforming its local coordinate system. So for example, here I have the global coordinate system Right, the xy axis in this light gray color and I have the turtle in its original position and it has its own xy coordinate system and if this turtle is moved to different locations the coordinate system moves with it so for example I could uh, translate and rotate it around the origin and it will end up here like it did in one of the previous slides right, in this case its local x-axis points off in this direction, its local y-axis points in that direction. In fact, I could rotate and translate it over here, in which case its local x-axis is pointing down and its local y-axis is pointing to the right. right. This makes internal consistent sense from the point of view of the turtle. In fact, I could even scale the turtle, in which case the coordinate axes become larger. Right here, I've scaled the turtle in the y direction, and so any future y translations, a local y translation, would be larger because it has a larger local y axis. And so any transformations we apply to an object are also going to transform these axes which come along with the object. And now that we have a sense of local coordinate axes, we can more easily talk about local transformations. So here in this diagram, uh, let's start off with this turtle on the left part of this image. 
it has its own local x and y axes. So I might want to, say, perform a translation or a rotation of this turtle with respect to these local blue axes. For example, maybe I want to do a local translation in the x direction by two units. Right, so I want to start in this position and move it two units up. So in each of these other diagrams, I have a light version of the turtle showing you where the original turtle was. And I could move it two units along its x-axis. So this image represents a local translation by two zero. This next image represents a local translation by zero one. So one unit along its local y-axis. Or I could even do a local rotation. And a local rotation is going to rotate around the local center, that is, the center of the object itself. So if I locally rotate this turtle by 45 degrees, uh, the turtle is going to be facing upwards. Its local x-axis points up. And so local rotations are especially useful if you want to rotate an object kind of centered at its own location. Now, we still have to answer the question, uh, how, if it is even possible, how can we use matrix multiplication to perform these kinds of local transformations? Now, in order to answer that question, we need to introduce one more concept. And it's something called the model matrix of an object. Now, when we transform a set of points with a matrix, when we're doing this in OpenGL, each one of those points, right, they're stored in a vertex buffer. Those points are sent along to a vertex shader, and the multiplication takes place in the vertex shader. That generates a new set of coordinates and those new coordinates are passed along to the fragment shader to determine where the object is going to show up in the picture. But those new coordinates that are calculated are not permanently stored anywhere. Right? The original coordinates, the original points defining an object are stored in a vertex buffer and we're not changing those original values. So, how do we keep track of where an object is? How do we keep track of its location or orientation or size or scale. So the way this is done in computer graphics is instead of keeping track of the new points, we keep track of the accumulated transformations that have been applied to an object. The way we store this, we'll store the product of those matrices. And that product is called the model matrix. Right. Every translation, every rotation that has been done that defines the current state of the object, that's just stored as a single matrix. It is a little bit tricky to recover some of the information. The location you can read off as the rightmost column in that matrix, but retrieving the orientation and scale is a little bit more complicated. But that's okay. We don't really need to do that. But this idea of a model matrix is actually going to help us apply matrices as local transformations. And here's how we do it. So let's say I've got my turtle here, and this turtle is in some location, and it's defined by a model matrix M. So for instance, this particular turtle, if it started off at the origin, you could imagine that the model matrix M was the result of a translation along the x-axis followed by a rotation. So that matrix stores that information. Now let's assume that I want to do some transformation such as maybe I want to do a local translation along the local x-axis of the turtle. How can I do that? Well here's the key idea. When an object starts off in its very initial position, the coordinate axes are aligned. The local axes and the global axes are aligned when that turtle's in its original position at the origin. So to apply a transformation locally, we first need to move it back to the origin. And that's accomplished by applying the inverse of the model matrix, 
So that unrotates it and untranslates it. And then it's back in this home position. And now we'll apply that transformation that we want to do, indicated by this red arrow. Let's say we want to do translation. When the turtle is in this home position, uh, global translation and local translation, they line up perfectly. So let's perform the translation here and then reapply that model matrix. And that model matrix was translation, then rotation. And so this turtle ends up in this position. And in this last diagram, I've included the original position of the turtle, just for a frame of reference. You can see that this turtle has ended up being translated along its local x-axis. Right, so that's the idea, kind of like a three-step process for implementing a transformation as a local transformation, but we can actually simplify this a bit. Right, so we start off with the initial model matrix, which is applied to all the points. And when we apply uh, matrix transformations, we apply them on the left. On the right side, that's where the points are getting multiplied. So each subsequent transformation is a matrix which is multiplied on the left kind of like the order for function composition. So we start off with the turtle in its original position. We then multiply by M inverse. We then multiply by our transformation. And then we multiply by M again. Now it turns out there's some cancellation here. We have a matrix times its inverse. That gives us the identity and anything times the identity is itself. So what we're left with is M times T. So, this is the key takeaway. In order to perform this transformation as a local transformation, we actually need to multiply on the right by that matrix. And so local transformations correspond to right side multiplication by whatever that transformation matrix is. Right here, I represented it as translation, but it really could be any transformation that you'd like to do. And that's the key idea. All right, to summarize it up, if you have uh, some object, some geometric object, and it has a model matrix M, and you want to apply a geometric transformation T. If you want to apply it as a global transformation, this is something we already know, but including it for completeness, the new model matrix would be, you would take the original model matrix and multiply by T on the left. That would correspond to a global transformation, T. But what we've learned in this video is if we want to apply a matrix as a local transformation, take the model matrix, multiply it by T on the right, and make that the new model matrix. And that's how you do uh, local as compared to global transformations. It's all about the side on which you multiply the matrix. And it turns out this is gonna be incredibly useful. Uh, eventually, we'd really like to create kind of interactive three-dimensional scenes that you can explore. And so we're going to need to move around the virtual camera in the same way that a person would move. And we would naturally think of those transformations as local transformations, right? Uh, if you were somewhere, uh, you would know what's right in front of you. Moving forward always makes sense visually. But if you're in a three-dimensional scene, you might not know in which direction the z-axis is pointing. So when we navigate as people, we normally think in terms of local transformations. And that's why this topic is so important. And so this is actually it for the theoretical math. It's been a long time since we've done some coding. So in the next video, we're going to take the contents of basically the previous three or four or however many videos. We're going to create a matrix class and we're going to see how to use matrices to create some easier implementation of translation, rotation, scaling, perspective, projection, and of course, both global and local transformations. And so that's coming up in the next video.